Hi there. Let's test your understanding of phrasal verbs in this podcast. Can you understand the following sentences? This is someone who's not very pleased. I've put up with you putting me down for long enough. It puts me off having a relationship with you. I feel put on, but I'm going to put aside my feelings and invite you to the party anyway. I'll put your moods down to the stress of your job. It sounds like this person is really not very happy, doesn't it? And how much of that did you understand? Notice how many times the verb put is used. I'll say it again. I've put up with you putting me down for long enough. It puts me off having a relationship with you. I feel put on, but I'm going to put aside my feelings and invite you to the party anyway. I'll put your moods down to the stress of your job. Let's work on this type of phrasal verb sentence today and boost your understanding of informal spoken English. Hello, I'm Hilary and you're listening to Adept English. We will help you to speak English fluently. All you have to do is listen. So start listening now and find out how it works. So what's problematic about these sentences? Well, they all use the common verb to put, P-U-T. But to put is being used as a phrasal verb in each case. That's phrasal, P-H-R-A-S-A-L. And a phrasal verb is a verb made up of more than one word. A phrase verb, if you like. These are very common in English and they usually consist of a verb and a preposition, or sometimes two prepositions. Words like up, with, in, out, on, or under, they're all prepositions. So in that sentence I gave you as an example, the following common phrasal verbs using to put were used. To put up with, to put down, to put off, to put on, to put aside, and to put down to. They all sound similar, but they all have different meanings, and that's the challenge. The value of this podcast is that it addresses a common challenge faced by language learners like yourself. In informal English conversation, we use these phrasal verbs all the time. The estimate is that there are over 10,000 phrasal verbs in the English language, so knowing them will truly help your understanding. But 10,000 phrasal verbs is a lot. The common ones are far fewer. So naturally, our podcasts focus on the most common ones, the ones that are actually useful to you. That's similar to the thinking behind our most common 500 words course. The purpose of Adept English is to help you learn adeptly. It makes sense to spend your time on the most common words. That gives more bang for your buck. Don't waste time. Learn adeptly. Go to our website at adeptenglish.com to have a look at the most common 500 words course if you've not done it already. Now, traditional language learning courses don't always pay much attention to phrasal verbs, which means as an English language student, you perhaps do well at exams, but real life English conversation is a struggle. So listen on if you want to do real life English conversation rather than just pass exams. Some other useful phrasal verb adept English podcasts. Podcast 640 goes through some common phrasal verbs using to come, while podcast 446 goes through common phrasal verbs using to get. Podcast 551 covers phrasal verbs with to fall, and podcast 237 covers phrasal verbs with to break, and 411 covers phrasal verbs with to throw. You can find these easily by going to the lessons page at adeptenglish.com and keying in the podcast number in the search field. And obviously in this podcast 756, I'm covering common phrasal verbs using to putt. So let's pick up that sentence that I said right at the beginning. Here it is again. I've put up with you putting me down for long enough. It puts me off having a relationship with you. I feel put on, 
but I'm going to put aside my feelings and invite you to the party anyway. I'll put your moods down to the stress of your job. So the first one, to put up with. Every phrasal verb has a more formal verb equivalent, which means the same. So here, if you put up with someone or something, then this means the same as to tolerate. That's T-O-L-E-R-A-T-E. So here, I've put up with, I've tolerated you putting me down for long enough. I'm done with it, in other words. I've tolerated it for a long time. Other example sentences, she has to put up with the downside of being famous. My uncle put up with the noise from the road outside his house for many years. Don't confuse this phrasal verb to put up with with the other phrasal verb to put up. If someone says, oh, I'll put you up, that means they're inviting you to come and stay at their house. So what's confusing? Phrasal verbs use prepositions and they're only little words, but they change the meaning entirely. So to put someone up means to allow someone to stay at your home. And this is different from to put up with someone, meaning to tolerate them. Next one. I've put up with, I've tolerated you putting me down for long enough. So to put someone down means to criticise someone or to belittle that person. That's B-E-L-I-T-T-L-E. We also use put down as a noun, as in, oh, that was a bit of a put down from my boss. And the sense is that the putting down or the put downs here are unfair. A person is criticising, not because it's deserved, but because they feel like criticising. It's not fair and it's not what we call constructive criticism. The other, more formal alternative verb I used, to belittle, means to purposefully make someone feel small. Another phrase we sometimes use in English, to put someone in their place, meaning to correct that person, to tell them what they've got wrong. There's less of a sense of it being unjust there. Whereas if you talk about put downs or to put someone down, it means automatically it's being done unfairly. So that's to put down, meaning to criticise or to belittle. Third phrasal verb using to put. It puts me off having a relationship with you. So again, it's guessable perhaps from the context, the rest of the sentence. If someone is put off, it means that they don't feel like doing something. If there's a fly in your soup, you're likely to be put off eating that soup. We also use to put off meaning to delay something. For example, she put off accepting that job offer because she was waiting to see if the other company made her an offer. So two meanings here, to put off, meaning to cause you to have negative feelings for someone or something, and to put off, meaning to delay something. Next one, I feel put on, but I'm going to put aside my feelings and invite you to the party anyway. So I feel put on. It's more like put on is being used as an adjective here. It's a past participle, of course. If someone feels put on, it means that they feel taken advantage of. Someone is taking advantage of them. So here, I feel put on by you means I feel taken advantage of by you. And we do use this as a verb. Also to put on someone means to take advantage of someone. But in the second part of this sentence, but I'm going to put aside my feelings and invite you to the party anyway. So here, to put aside means to ignore for now, to discount for the moment. That's to put aside. So I'm going to invite you to the party, even though I'm not feeling very happy with you. That's what this means. I'm putting my feelings aside. Last part of that sentence. The sentence was, I'll put your moods down to the stress of your job. So to put something down to means that you're giving an explanation or a reason for it. My cake didn't rise. 
I'll put it down to the oven not being hot enough. Another way of saying this would be, my cake didn't rise. I think the reason was the oven wasn't hot enough. Another example, my car didn't start this morning. I'll put it down to a flat battery. So the explanation that I'm giving for my car not starting this morning, the battery is flat. So be careful. To put down or to put someone down means to criticise or belittle, whereas to put something down to something means to give a reason for something. Phrasal verbs are hard. You'll need to listen to this podcast a number of times until you start to remember the different meanings. In summary, they were to put up with, meaning to tolerate. Whereas if you agree to put someone up, that means you give them a bed for the night in your home. You invite them to stay. To put someone down means to criticise somebody or to belittle them. Whereas to put something down to means to give a reason for something. We also covered to put someone off something. Think of the fly in the soup example. A fly in your soup puts you off eating that soup. Whereas to put something off means to delay something. If you're feeling put on or someone is putting on you, that means they're taking advantage. Whereas if you put something aside, it means you're going to ignore it for now. Let us know whether that summary at the end is helpful. And let us know whether you want more phrasal verbs and if it would help to have a phrasal verb quiz to test your knowledge. Enough for now. Have a lovely day. Speak to you again soon. Goodbye. Thank you so much for listening. Please help me tell others about this podcast by reviewing or rating it. And please share it on social media. You can find more listening lessons and a free English course at adeptenglish.com.